Hi, this is Lee. I'm going to make a video today to help you set up a blog so that you can present evidence against the new teaching standards. There are six of them which have replaced the 12 PTCs or Practicing Teacher Criteria and this video hopefully will set you on the track for being able to record your inquiry and tag it according to those standards. So let's start by saying you will need a Gmail. So if you don't have a Gmail address, you need to set one up first. Once you've got a Gmail address, you will be able to sign into your Gmail and you'll be able to access Blogger. Now you can either write Blogger in the URL bar or you can access it using your um, nine squares here. When I click on Blogger, it takes me to blogger.com it takes me to one I've already set up and I want to show you that one right now so we're going to view the blog. This is the way I've set it up. So I've called it Teaching Standards and you'll also notice that I have a couple of other pages. One I've actually got the standards in a document so I can refer to it and check it out plus the elaboration for each standard. There are about 24 of these, so quite a few different elaborations um, to have a look through. I've also got a page called Tatai Ako, just to refer to that. Um, there is a link to the document from the Education Council about Tatai Ako, but it's important to show evidence of Tatai Ako as well. In addition, I've already started putting the labels in. So over here on the right, if I go back to the home page for a moment, you can see I have my um, labels of biculturalism, uh, professional learning, professional relationships, learning focused culture, design for learning and teaching. I'm going to show you how to add Tatai Ako in there as well soon, but um, I want to get you started on making your blog. So when you've signed into blogger.com, if you've already got some blogs, so it will be showing up here with a little down arrow next to it. Um, I have a lot of blogs, so if I want to make a new blog, I just go right to the bottom and click on New Blog. This is where you'll be prompted to put in the name of your new blog. Uh, you can call it whatever you like, ePortfolio um, for Jane or whatever. You will also get a URL which will be um, a blogspot.com URL and it'll tell you whether it's available or not. Now in the new blogger, um, I suggest you use um, the simple um, theme, this one here, because it's easy to get in and out to the back of the blog and to the front of the blog. And then create the blog. Once you do that, you'll be prompted to um, answer a question. Do you want it associated with your Google Plus profile or with a blogger profile and just choose the blogger profile unless you're wanting to publish your posts on Google Plus all the time. I don't recommend that since it's an um, e-portfolio against the new teaching standards and should be just viewed by your appraiser and or critical friend and or your principal. Once I'm there it will take me to a page that looks like this but without the posts. The first thing you need to do is check your settings. So on the basic, it will tell you the title of your blog. It will also tell you the URL of your blog, which you should not change. You can also see who the authors are and who the is, is the administrator, in this case I am. I always make it in my own private email address. Blog readers, by default it's public, so you want to change that and either have only the blog authors or invite um, other readers, say for example your appraiser or your critical friend. I'm going to keep mine on public and just keep those changes. Posts and comments, just make sure that you have anyone can comment and the comment is always moderated and those comments go to your email and you decide whether you can, you will approve them or not. Carrying on from there, you can click on the email and you can actually put a word in, a secret word in this part here if you want to publish through email. So you just put that email address into your contacts and you can send um, 
uh, post straight to your blog if you want to. Uh, language and formatting, the only thing I'd say in there is just change the time zone to Auckland, it's down near the bottom. Search preferences, pretty straightforward. Other things, I don't think there's anything there that you need to worry about. User settings, as I said, choose blogger profile. I choose Google Plus because I publish a lot of mine. So those are the basic settings. We'll just save anything that we have. Um, you can, of course, change your theme. So by default, it's this lovely orange color. You can change it by clicking on the... Um, a button there and just have a look at the background you can upload all sorts of different images if you like um, change the background and so on that's up to you you can upload your own if you like I'll say done keep it like that you can change even the color there if you want to but you can adjust the widths of your blog just use the sliders as you wish um, I like to have mine fairly wide. The layout's an important uh, aspect. Most um, blogs are set up with the header, the main text here, and the labels, etc., down the side. You can change that around and put it on the left if you wish, or other options. Um, advanced, you can change the font type for each part of the blog, choosing different colors, etc. Apply it all to the blog and go back to Blogger. Under Layout, this is where you need to actually add in labels. So you can see I've added a gadget, and this is a labels gadget called Teaching Standards. So to add it, it's very straightforward. Just click on that, add a gadget, um, find labels. There it is there, and just press the little cross to add it. I'm not going to add it because I already have it there. Um, and... Well, let me just show you how the editing button. So I've renamed it Teaching Standards, um, showing all labels alphabetically in a list form, and I'm showing the number of posts per label and saving it. What this means is that when you want to write a new post, so let's go to Posts and write a new post, um, you can write about your inquiry, for instance, and it may be that boys writing this is the scanning stage is not as good and you can click on that and because this is about the inquiry it comes under number two the professional learning the first elaboration is um, carrying out inquiry so you can just add that say done and publish it you can see that the label is showing there if I look at the blog I can see that um, I've got a whole lot of posts here four of them have been about the professional learning so I'll just click on that and it brings up all posts with label 2 professional learning and there's four of them you can tell that because of that little number there so it's really handy to have your labels in there you can add more labels as you write your blog posts. So for example, I want to edit this particular blog post about Māori boys writing. And I think, well, that's actually to do with whanaungatanga, which is uh, one of the cultural competencies. So I'm going to click on the labels and just add, um, and I'll just update it. It sits in there as uh, another label if I want to go back and add it. So if I want to view the post again, you can see Whanaunga Tanga is in there now with one post. Lastly, I just want to show you how to add other pages. Like in this one, I have added the standards. I've got a document in there. I have to go back into the design of the blog. To add pages in, the first thing you have to do is go to the layout. When you click on that, in the top section here, you'll see Add a Gadget. If you look for this gadget called Pages and add that. Uh, because I've already made these pages, I'm able just to tick them and they will show up on my blog.
go to the bottom, save it, and then save that arrangement. And you'll see those pages have showed up across the top. If I want to add a new page, once again I have to go back into the back of the blog by hitting Design, click on Pages, and make a new page. I'll call this one Test. Publish it. Now it's showing here. I can view the blog. And I want it to show here. So I click on those settings. Check the test as well. Then it will show up. Down to save. Do a refresh. And you can see it's showed up there. So you can keep on adding static sort of pages if you wish to. The main idea though is to write a blog post each day or each few days, each week even, and uh, label it with what aspect of your teaching is it about. Uh, um, and generally speaking, reporting on your inquiry will cover all of those aspects, all of those teaching standards, plus all of the tātai ako. So you can incorporate your blog into a site that you um, use for your ePortfolio as well. Um, I've set up this one as an example, uh, Lee Hines Portfolio, that's my home page. You can see on the blog tab I've added my own um, opinion blog and also teaching standards blog. Uh, I can set up a separate page for an inquiry if I wish and I can also um, have the standards evidence folder. So if you make a whole lot of folders in your Google Drive, you can uh, bring that whole folder into your site. I see a site as a place where you can bring all of your evidence together for viewing. So the blog um, and the standards, any evidence that you have in your portfolio and any of the facilitator dimensions if you're a facilitator or if you're a principal, um, also your um, your standards. If you want to know how to set up a site and bring in the standards and the facilitator dimensions, look for one of my other videos. Setting up is the hardest part. Once you've got that set up, you'll be able to carry on working and adding bits and pieces to your portfolio, either through the site or through your blog.